Now I'm going to turn this service over to Brother Steve, and I'm sure God's laid a, a message on him this morning. And just let him walk us through the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Keith. It's good to be back in God's house this morning. Good to see everybody out here with us today. And let's just get in today and worship the Lord and praise Him and glorify Him in this house this morning. That's what we've come here to do. Uh, I know there's a lot of things out there going on and a lot of a lot of devastation in our world, but I'm thankful this morning to know the one that can take care of every need that you and I have. Turn with me this morning to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter number 24, Psalm chapter 24, here this morning. Praise the Lord. Psalms 24. David writes and says in verse 1, says, For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, for the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. For who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. For who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully? He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. For this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the kingdom of glory shall, and the king of glory shall come in. For who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. For who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Would you pray with me today? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and opportunity, God, that we have to assemble ourselves here today in your beautiful house. And God, we pray today, Lord Jesus, Father, we pray today for your richest anointing, God, that you would just pour your spirit out upon us today and use us, God, for your glory. I pray, Lord, that you put the word in our mouth today. God, make our tongue that of a pen of a ready writer. God, that we might speak as the oracle of God. I pray, God, that you work in the midst here this morning of this body of believers. God, that you touch lives in this place. God, that you challenge each and every one of us to live close to you and to live more like you. And Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. David said, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the world and they that dwell therein. He declares unto, unto, this, unto them and those that read this word who it is that we belong to. Inevitably, we belong to God. Amen. And saint of God, he formed man. He created man that we would worship him and created us and give us the option, I will say, that we can worship him if we so choose to. I was reading this morning down through the Word of God and I've been thinking all week long about the presence of God and how precious the presence of God is to you and I. I'll go back just a little bit. I believe it was last week. It may have been the week before when we preached here about Christ and what Christ has done for you and I and given us access to God through Jesus and how that He's came into our lives and lived in our lives. How precious that is to us, saint of God. I'm glad tonight that there's not still a veil up there. I'm glad tonight that it's been rent in twain. I'm glad that it's been opened up now that you and I can come boldly, the Bible says, to the throne of grace. I'm glad this morning that we can enter into a place with God to where we can feel His presence. I'm glad for that today. And we can do that when we have relationships 
relationship with Jesus Christ. And church, we're to not ever to take that for granted, but we're to ever have fellowship with him because it's that fellowship with Christ that we grow thereby and we have more of him and we grow more in him and God can work in our heart and in our life. As I read down through here this morning in the book of Psalms, the 24th chapter, it says, for he hath founded it, founded the, uh, upon the, and the seas, and he has established it upon the floods. And it says in verse 3, it says, Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand before his holy place? David asks a question here, and he goes ahead and answers it for us. He says, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from God of his salvation. Now church, I was reading this week, been reading this past week at different times and I've been coming back here to where I want to take us in this direction this morning in First Chronicles chapter 13 this morning. We have a story uh, here and God moved in the power and the Ark of the Covenant. Now at this point in chapter 13, of First Chronicles here. We'll read you some things in verse number one. And it said, And David consulted with the captains of the thousands and of hundreds and with every leader. And it said, And David said unto all of the congregation of Israel, he said, If it be if it seem good unto you that it be of the Lord our God, and let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all of the land of Israel and that with them the priests of the Levites which are in the cities uh, and, the, and the suburbs and they that may gather themselves unto us. And he said, and let us bring again. Now I want you to notice that. He said, let us bring again the ark of our God to us. He said, for we have been inquired not at it in the days of Saul. David said, we let us bring it again. Now you realize this morning, and if you don't, I want to just throw this here to you this morning. What did that ark represent? That ark was something that God had given them as a place of his dwelling. God dwelt there. When they made, when the ark was built, he gave them specifics. You can go back into the book of Exodus, the book of Numbers, and you can read how God had ordained them, directed them that they were to build, and not only to build, but how they were to handle it. Now I want you to realize that and David at this point realizes that something has happened. The presence now that, that, that was with that ark was phenomenal. God's presence was there. The commandments had been placed in there and things there and God dwelt with that. Now David said let us go and do what? Bring it again. It meant that it had been in their possession in time Time past. He's inquiring now of the men as to how the, the, he's letting them know this thing's been gone. Let us go. But what you got to realize is this. David at this point realizes the significance of the need of the presence of God, but he goes about it in the wrong way to bring it back. And, and Uzzah died there at this cause. And saint of God, when David went out and he inquired of the men. Now notice that. David inquired of the committees. David inquired of the people around about there. And then and he inquired of them as to how that they were to do it. But saint of God, it was very clear in Exodus and Numbers as to how it was to be done. It wasn't no need to go to a vote. Wasn't no need to go to a committee. It was to follow the direction that God gave them you realize something a lot of times, saint of God, men realizes, I believe in this age of time, men realizes what we need most is the presence of God. There's only one way to have it, saint of God, and that's God's way. If we go about it the wrong way, we can't have what it takes for God to move and change lives. God gave them a direction here how to go about it. You can read right on down through 1 Chronicles 13 and you can see what they 
done. They built a new cart to put that on. It wasn't to be put on a new cart. It's to be carried on the shoulder of the priest. And those priests were a representation of Christ. They were men of God, holy men. It wasn't to be put on a cart. They, it looked good. It looked religious. And that's what it was. Man, they were doing all the right things. They've got a song and a possession going on out there. Man, it looked good. But when that old ox stumbled and who's a wretch out to touch that, the Bible tells us God was angry with that. And that man died there for the cause of it. Saint of God, the presence was very real there. But they were handling that in a wrong way. I can tell you something, church. We can't do anything for God apart from the presence of God. We must have the power of the Holy Ghost working in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And David realized that this presence isn't here. Now I can tell you something, church. That ought to be reason enough right there for any pastor or any leader to get stirred. Amen? That ought to be reason enough for anybody to find them an altar somewhere and pray through that God give them a direction. But I can tell you something, church, going out there with a purpose, and it wasn't a bad purpose, it's a needful thing, but going out there with the purpose without being led of the Spirit of God was devastating to us. Amen? I can tell you, church, when we follow the leading of the Spirit of God, when God says move, I can tell you, move right then. Amen? And the power of God was resting upon those that followed him with obedience. David realized that the presence of God isn't here but he said let us bring it again. Amen. In verse number three said let us bring it again the ark of our God to us for we are inquired not of it and in, in, he said we required not of it at in any of the days of Saul. Now I want you to notice that they hadn't even inquired of it. They They'd just been gone for a long period of time. Church, how much of the church world in this day and age that we live on, live in, how many people's prayed, God, may your presence be in a service this morning. Amen. How many people's prayed, God, would you move in the midst of a church? God, would you just move? Can we have a move of God? Listen, church, I can tell you when we get away from that, we're missing God. When we get away from longing for the presence of God. The Bible said that it had been a while since the presence since the ark had been in their midst. The ark representing the presence of God. It's been a while since it's been there and they realize and now we might ought to go get that. Amen. I can tell you church there's a world of people out there that's starting to realize it's time that we get back to living right. Amen. It's time that we get back to seeking the face of God again. It's time that we get back to a relationship with him again. Why? Because there's some things that used to be there that ain't there now. Amen. And we just liked it better when they were there. Amen. I can tell you, church, we can read and look back through the dawn of time and we can see many great things that happened down through the word of God. And even in our generation of time that's not as real today or not as going on, I should say, today like it was in their day in old church but when we get down to the root of the problem it's not my brother it's not my sister but it's me oh Lord standing in the need of prayer amen when we get down to the bare root of the problem it's this we've longed after other things and sought after other things more than after the things of God but when a realization comes that it's time that we get back to living for him amen and it's time that we seek the presence of God. I can tell you, brother and sister, when you do it in the right manner, the glory of the Lord will come down. Amen. We find through the word of God that David went about it all in the wrong way in this age that we live in, church. What may be working over there may not work right here. Why? Because God didn't lead us in that direction. You know what's happened in this society? There have been too many people that's acted up on new carts. Amen. They've been in age has come about said man it's working good over yonder let's get us one of them new carts and it don't work like that but I can tell you something brother sister when we get down get humble before God and stay in an altar of prayer and God
God says, I say now, go get the cart, amen, and put it up on the shoulder, carry that thing like I've directed, carry the presence of God like I've ordained it to do. I can tell you something, brother or sister, when we do that right there, then the presence, then the power, then the glory of the true and the living God rest upon them that will obey his word. Hallelujah. David consulted with man about it, but it doesn't say that he talked to God. David went to the men and he said, what do y'all think about it? Oh, we get a vote on it. Boy, passes the vote, it'll go. But is it what God wants to do? Is it the direction that God would have us to go? You can look back, many have it seen it over and over and over again. But search when we get in the direction of a man, if we're every time we're going in a man's direction, we'll miss God. His ways is higher than ours. His thoughts is higher than ours. But when we consult with God and we hear from God, we should never have to have approval of man. Amen. Amen. Why? Because it's God's direction. It's God's direction. And when we're following it by the ways of God, then we know that God's going to lead us in the right direction, do we not? And we know what's going to happen when we do that. We know that God's going to bless. Amen. God's going to move. God's going to touch. God's going to lift up. He's going to restore. He's going to move in our heart and in our life and work in that. And boy, begin to read down through that. And the Bible says, in verse 3. David said, let us bring it again. And I thought, oh God, let the church of the Lord Jesus Christ get on her knees again. And Lord, let us have it again. Amen. Let us have the same presence, God, that we've grown up around. Let us have the same presence, God, that we know that you moved in the early church with. Let us have the glory. Oh church, it's time that we, the body of Christ get humble before God and bring the presence of God again into the midst of the body of people preacher can we do it yes sir when we humble ourselves before God and seek the face of God and live righteous and live holy and walk in the word in the confined word of the living God then yes sir we can have the blessings of God but it will not come apart from the direction that God gives you and I. Amen. He teaches us in there. But many go about it in their own way. And they go about it in the wrong way. You know why? Because they want that new cart. Not a new car, but a new cart. Could be a new car. You realize something, saint of God? The enemy places things in along the way to deceive people. Boy, it looks good. It looks good. I've seen some things along the way that looked good. And they looked right. But when I began to pray about them, I didn't feel right about them. And I've had people to look at me like I was wrong for that. But I can tell you something, saint of God, just hang around. Hang around. Because if it's not of God, it won't work. But if God's in it, God will bless, God will touch, God will move, God will provide, God will make a way. If we'll allow Him to. I've looked back through the course of time and I've seen things that I, that I look back and people look down because maybe we didn't agree with it on that manner. But I was praying about it. I was praying about it. Had people who thought that I was being judgmental because I just wasn't all for it. But I didn't feel right about it. I just didn't feel right about it. I won't bring it out, but uh, you could look back today and you can see some, some serious things there. Church, we're living in a time that we better be sensitive to the Spirit of God. I can tell you this this morning, church. When we get hungry for the things of God and we desire God to move in our life, we'll be obedient for God to move. You know, I can remember back several years ago, it's been a long, long time since I've punched a time clock. 
Let me back up on that in a, in, a, in a roundabout way. I guess I still do almost, but in a roundabout way. It's been a long time since I've had a card that I physically slid in under a clock that had a time on it. But there was times that when I worked in the, in the public job in the factory, I had a card in there that had my name on it. Every morning I'd walk in there and I'd pick that card up out of a little slot that had my name on it and I'd slide it under that little clock with an arrow on it and I'd pull that lever down and from that moment on I was clocked in. From that time on till lunchtime when we clocked out and clocked back in and clocked out at quitting time, we were on that card. And that clock was there. We were dialed in. We were there to do the job. We were there to perform that. But saint of God, we live in a time right now and in this age where people have put God on a time clock. They've put God into a place that, well, we're going to go down here and this and that such time. And God, you know, you've got from 11 to 12 to 11.45 to 12 or whatever there to move and God just move because when it gets 12 o'clock we're going to clock out of there. And we may not ever go about the door and punch in the number, punch in the little device out there somewhere, but in our mind we've clocked out. Do you know why? Because we've got God in the schedule. But I'm going to tell you God don't operate on a schedule. God operates at his free will. David realized there's something missing about us that we need again. Amen. David realized that the children of Israel had something in a time past that they needed again and what they had had in a time past was at Obed-Edom's house and it's time to go get that. Amen. It's time that we go get that. Now in chapter 15 of 1 Chronicles 1 Chronicles 15 let's look here in verses 1 through 4 and it said, and David made him a house in the city. And David prepared a place. Now I want you to notice that. David prepared a place for the ark of God. And he pitched for it a tent. Then David said, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. Now then, David's got the direction that God provided for them. He said, none's to carry this but the Levites from them that hath God chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. And David gathered all of Israel together. Now, I want you to notice this. He gathered all of Israel together to Jerusalem to bring the ark of the Lord unto his place. Amen. For which he had prepared for it. And David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites, the sons of Kohath and Uriel, the chief of the brethren, and a hundred and twenty. And let's jump on down here to verse number 11. And it said, And David called for Zadok of Ebertar the priest and the Levites of Israel and Israel and Joel and, and Shemael and Eli and, 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 a, and a bit of that. And he said unto them, he said, for ye the chief of the fathers of the Levites, he said, sanctify yourselves. Now I want you to notice that. He said, sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that you may bring the ark, uh, may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel into the place that I have prepared for it. For because you did it not at the first First, the Lord our God made a breach upon us for that we sought that we sought him not after the due order. Now I want you to notice that right there. He said, so the priest of the Levites they sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel and the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves thereon as Moses commanded according unto the word of the Lord. And David spoke to the chief Levites and he appointed the brethren there he appointed the brethren to be the singers uh, with the instruments of music, psalteries, harp, cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. Now I want you to notice what David had commanded them to do. He said, I want you to bring the instruments out here. I want you to get everybody that can play the song. We're going to take this ark, the presence of God. We're bringing it back to the house in the right fashion. When David done that, St. 
children of God that had been at Obed-Edom's house and when they'd done that, Obed-Edom, when they left there with it, he left with them. Amen. He knew that this presence means something to me. Amen. Oh, church, when it gets valuable to you, I said when it gets valuable to you, you'll go to great lengths to have the presence of God in your life. Obed-Edom left everything that he owned back there to go with God. I can tell you, church, when it gets valuable to you, when it means something to you, not anything else in this world will mean as much to you as the presence of God does. Obed-Edom, when he left there, saying of God, the presence going. David, now they've got the ark up on that. They're going before him. Man, they're playing music. They sing and they worship and they're obeying the commandment of God. I mean, I mean right down to the letter. I mean in the presence of God's going now with the children of Israel. Oh, I love reading right on down through there, saying of God. One of my favorite passages is to read. When old David, when the ark come home, my Lord, it been gone too long now, but when the presence of the Lord came in the midst of the camp, old David coming right down the road shouting, hey man, school hopping, jumping, running, worshiping, glorifying God, embarrassed his wife up there, looking down upon him, but he didn't care. He realized that man, the presence of God's now with the children of Israel. We've done this thing the right way, and the blessings of God's on the camp again. Things is looking up. I can tell you something, church. It ought to be in our heart. I said it ought to be in our heart to have the presence of God in our life every day that we live. Amen. It ought to be something that we covet earnestly. The presence of God. I love when I feel God's presence and His and the moving of His Spirit. David brings the ark home, verses 25 down through 28, and it said, So David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands said they went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. <laughs> Notice that. He said they went with joy to bring it. I'm going to tell you something. It ought not ever be a problem to go into the presence of God. But it ought always be a joy when we get into the realm of the Spirit of God. It ought to be something, church, that we long for. The Bible said that it was a joy unto them to go. You know why? Because they knew that the presence of God's there. We're bringing this back home to us now. We're bringing this back home. And they got into the presence of God. And he said, and it came to pass that when God helped the Levites, notice that, when God helped the Levites that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, they that offered seven bullocks and seven rams. And David was clothed with the robe and a fine linen and all the Levites that bear the ark and the singers and the, and the, and the, and the, uh, yeah, and the, and I and the master of the song with the singers. David also had upon him an ephod of linen. And Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting. Glory. Said they brought it up with shouting and with the sound of the cornet, with the trumpet, with the cymbal, and making a noise with the psalteries and harp. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It said for thus all of Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting. You know what, church? They were worshiping God. I said they were worshiping God with all of their might. They were doing everything that they could to glorify the presence of God. They were doing everything that they could to lift up the presence of God. I can tell you that anybody sitting around there turned their head and said, what's this about? They knew what's fixing to happen. Hallelujah. They knew that the presence that's been gone from here is coming back no doubt every enemy that Israel had quivered now why? because now the presence of God rests within them and upon them again they brought the blessing of God back by their obedience and doing God's will not out of man's way not with man's way but God's way 
And the Bible said, And the Lord, and they said, And thus Israel brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting, with the sound of a coronet, with trumpets, with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. We live in a world right now that makes all kinds of noise to glorify their sin. Amen. You get out here, church, I'm a... Lord help. The church is something different than the world, folks. And a child of God is to be different than the world. And I can tell you, church, the world exploits their sin, their lifestyles, and their behaviors. They flaunt it all over the globe. But I can tell you this much this morning, a child of God's different from that. You're to be different from that, not to be a part of it. We're to be separated, separate from the things of this world. Long time ago, my wife and I, this has been a long time ago, my wife and I, she had called in on the radio and won concert tickets to somebody, I don't even remember, it was Alan Jackson maybe, way back there. Starts out, I don't remember, I think that's right. So we went to that. About two or three songs into that, I was so miserable. I just couldn't sit there. I, I just didn't. We, we sat there for a while. A little bit, she looked over at me and she said, you about ready to go? I said, I sure am. We got up. We went out of there and left. I never was so glad to get out of that environment. You know why? Because I was a foreigner there, Brother Allen. I was a foreigner there. I didn't feel right in that environment. When I got out there, got on, got on our way home, we've, and from then on to now, we've not been involved in anything, never went to anything like that no more because we wasn't a citizen of that country anymore. Left there. I can tell you something, church, it means something to me to have the power of God in my life means something to me and I get down and I begin to pray and I can feel the Shekinah glory of heaven settle in wherever I may be whether it's over yonder on the back side of one of these mountains sitting beside a white oak tree when I can bow my head drop my head and talk to God and feel the glory settling around me means something to me when you call me I can call, we get down and get to talking to God and I can feel the presence of God moving in your situation and I know that things is going to be alright because the power of God's there. It means something, church, when we come around these altars and, and then there's somebody in this house got a need in their life, said there any sick among you, said let them call for the elders of the church when they stand up and say, listen, brother, I'm sick and I need prayer. Hey, come down here and we take this anointing oil we anoint them with all and pray over them people gather in and pray over them the prayer of faith it means something when people comes back and says my Lord God heal me of that right there Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night in that altar it means something church to have the presence of God in our lives not just once in a while but all of the time and I can tell you when we live after the things of God we can have the things of God. David said in Psalms 140 and 13, he said, Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name, and the upright shall dwell in thy presence. David knew what it was like to have it in a day past. And he knew what's missing. I have... I've seen it a lot of times and so have you something go wrong this is the problem this is it right here right here boy I mean everything in there in my job sometimes I have to be very careful I get what they call tunnel vision very easily sometimes 
You can have a trouble over here somewhere and going out of direction over there. And have trouble in a stretch cable. And you get a call, somebody down the line there in that same stretch, they got problems. Kind of of the same nature that you've got, been a having. You can take a tunnel vision real quick. Now, granted, a lot of times it might be there. A lot of times it might not. A lot of people sometimes they get tunnel vision and they go to searching. Well, it's this and it's that. And they'll jump over here for a while. But I can tell you something, church. There's a reason we're not having revival. It's simple. Not being cruel. I'm not being harsh. Man just is not desiring revival. Not being, not being mean about that. Because they've went on over there. They've allowed the course of life. They've allowed the things of life, the affairs of this world, to override the, the, what they want the most. Either that, or they've got a new cart. And they're going about it the wrong way. But when David realized there's something gone here that we need back, he was a man that truly the scripture was fulfilled in. That he had a heart after God. When David realized that those presence, that the presence of God's not here like I need, what did he do? He went for it. When, it, when he didn't succeed, he realized where the problem was. The problem was this. He went about it in the wrong way. What did he do? He dropped it off. He went back. He got right with God. He prayed through. He followed the leading of the Spirit of God. Then he went and got it. Then he brought it home. Then the blessing was there. And in that order. And saying of God, that's exactly how it would be in my life and in yours. Would you bow your heads with us today in this house? Praise God. Musicians, would you help me this morning in this altar service? <clears throat> when David knew that it wasn't there, something's got to be done. I want to ask you something this morning, church. What do you do when you know it isn't there? There's times we go through what we call in the Pentecostal rim dry spells. You've lived for God any length of time. You know what it takes. It still takes the same thing today that it's always took. That's just getting humble before God. You might say, you mean tell me, preacher, you just, every day you just feel. No. I may not feel every day. If there's one thing I do know, I know where my strength lies. I know what it's going to take. I know what it has to take takes the presence and the blessing of God there. See, sometimes, church, you got to walk this thing by faith. you got to walk this thing by faith because right now, here this morning, sitting in this house, hey, somebody, you're beating yourself you're beating yourself up listen to me you got to walk this thing in faith in Christ Jesus you've got to walk this thing in faith by Christ Jesus with Christ Jesus putting your faith in him You've looked out there and you said, Preacher, it's just not there. 
I'm going to tell you something. You can get it today just like you got it in time past. It takes the presence of God. There's a world of people throw the towel in just on the threshold of the blessing of God flooding. They give up. Quit. Man, don't do that. We're too near home. Wonder this morning, sitting across this building, if there'd be one in this house today you lost without Jesus Christ. You're not living for God. You've not been walking with Him. You're away from God this morning. It's going to make things right in your life. Would you get up this morning and make your way to this altar? Make your way here this morning. You're away from God right now. You're lost. And you know that. This altar's open.